Doctor Strange is the latest character from Marvel's back catalogue that the studio is hoping to turn into big cash money. And while they've made a habit of making big dollar dollar from their B, C and D teams, that success wasn't always guaranteed. Sure, characters like Iron Man and Captain America are big names, but it was clear, at least at the time they were announced, that Joe and Jane Public and their fictional kids Billy and Betty, who I've literally just made up, didn't have the foggiest clue who Guardians of the Galaxy, the Winter Soldier or even Ant-Man were. And yet, Marvel made a cool $2 billion from those characters, so they must have done something right. Probably because of this inspired marketing. Ants. Ants. Ant-Man! Are Marvel trolling us? I mean, I genuinely can't tell anymore. And so we come to Marvel's latest reach into our pockets. Doctor Strange, one of their more esoteric creations. But who exactly is the Sorcerer Supreme? Well, apart from his skills as a neurosurgeon, he's also the most powerful wizard in the cosmos. A practitioner of both the mystical and martial arts, and generally one of the stranger characters in the Marvel roster. And now, as we all know, he's getting his own movie, where he's played by British thespian Benedict Cumberbatch. A movie that Marvel are marketing with, amongst other things... Seriously, Marvel can do literally anything and we'll go watch their movies. So while those were the top line facts about the doc, here are five things you might not know about Stephen Strange. This modern hospital may seem worlds apart from the days of ancient sorcerers. But for psychiatrist Stephen Strange and his beautiful patient, this is where those worlds collide. And the nightmare begins. 2016's Doctor Strange is not the good Doctor's first movie outing. And no, we're not including 2014's brief name drop in Captain America Winter Soldier. Bruce Banner, Stephen Strange, anyone who's a threat to Hydra. Nice bit of foreshadowing there. No, instead we're talking about the full-blown 93-minute CBS made-for-TV movie that aired in 1978. It featured Lucille Bluth from Arrested Development as evil sorceress Morgan Le Fay and Peter Hooton? Hooton? Anyone? No. As the psychiatrist turned Sorcerer Supreme, Stephen Strange. Have I become the sorcerer? No. You should probably check out the trailer on YouTube because it is genuinely incredible. The Doctor Strange TV movie was supposed to act as a pilot to set up a whole series, like the other Marvel TV shows that CBS were airing at the time, like The Amazing Spider-Man and The Incredible Hulk. But sadly, it just was never meant to be for Doctor Strange on the small screen, as the TV series was never picked up by the network. Stephen Strange may be getting ready to go on some adventures with the Avengers in the MCU, but in the comic book world, he's never actually been a card-carrying member of the core team. Yes, they have a club card, it's called the Avengers Identic Card, and its loyalty program gets you discounts on groceries. Probably. Before you get your underoos in a twist, yes, we know he was a member of the new Avengers, but that doesn't count since it was pretty much a team made up of whoever wasn't killed off in Civil War. One team Doctor Strange was part of, however, is the Defenders. In fact, he was a founding member of it. If the name Defenders is ringing some bells, it might be because that's the banner that Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage and Iron Fist will unite under in Marvel's Netflix universe. The Defenders first appeared in 1971 with Doctor Strange, Hulk and Namor the Submariner on the team. Later on, Silver Surfer also joined, among others. Their popularity has endured and as recent as this year, Doctor Strange assembled the secret defenders to fight alongside him. Doctor Strange has an extensive history of leading his own team and while the defenders name might be taken by the Marvel Netflix cinematic universe, we wouldn't be surprised to see him put together his own mystical team in the big screen MCU. The world we know in the MCU isn't the only one that exists in the Marvel canon. In fact, there's an infinite number of Marvel universes all existing within the comics, and Doctor Strange has featured in some of the very weirdest. 
There's one where Doctor Strange is a crocodile called Croctor Strange, and even one where he is an advisor to Queen Elizabeth I. In this regal timeline, Doctor Strange is now Sir Doctor Stephen Strange, the Queen's personal physician and master of the Queen's medicines, which might just be too many titles for your average business card. In this reality, we're in the year 1602 Tudor England, and the world as they know it has been plagued by some peculiar weather. Blood red skies, earthquakes, rains of lizards, you know, classic British weather. After Queen Elizabeth's death, the new King James imprisoned Strange and beheaded him for treason. His wife Clea took her husband's head from the pike it had been impaled on, communicated with it, and then fled to America. Since he was no longer alive, he was free to spiritually communicate a way to save the world to his wife. And once the earth was saved from the lizard rains, his head was allowed to return to his body in the crypt. They just love happy endings. Stephen Strange and Tony Stark are two sides of the same coin. They both defend the Earth against cataclysmic threats, but while one deals in science and technology, the other one deals in magic and mysticism. The pair disagree all the time, often because Tony Stark simply can't get on board with the idea that there are things in the universe he just can't explain. They frequently clash over the use of their unique abilities to solve their problems, with Iron Man dismissing magic as make-believe and Doctor Strange seeing technology as of limited applicability in his fantastical corner of the universe. But there's a good-natured rivalry between them. While we're yet to see how Strange will fit into the larger MCU, there's ample opportunity to have some fun with their relationship and create some friendly banter. Marvel comic fans have demanded the awesome facial hair bro gag be recreated in live action, and we're inclined to agree. I mean, who doesn't want to see Robert Downey Jr. and Benedict Cumberbatch high-five in honor of their goatees? Of course, there's also the opportunity to introduce the Illuminati. No, not that Illuminati. I'm talking about the other one. You know, the secret organization made up of the world's most powerful superheroes who meet in secret to pull the strings behind the biggest superhero teams and discuss the state of the world. Actually, they're not all that different from each other. Anyway, the MCU currently has three members of the Illuminati in play. Iron Man, Doctor Strange and Black Panther. Unfortunately, the other two, Professor X and Fantastic Four's Reed Richards are beyond reach since their movie licenses are over at 20th Century Fox, but they can easily be replaced with Black Bolt, who could be introduced in Marvel's Inhumans movie, and Namor, who totally deserves his own spin-off. And it would certainly be a great way to develop the relationship between Stark and Strange in the MCU. Doctor Strange fans will already know that he takes residence in a lovely three-story townhouse that he calls his Sanctum Sanctorum. It's a lovely building right in the heart of Greenwich Village, with the exact address being 177A Bleecker Street. In the comics, the house is an epicenter of magic, with a history that reads like an estate agent's worst nightmare. It was originally a site for pagan sacrifices, then the land was cursed by a shaman, and somewhere in there, Native American Indians used the space to cast rituals. Ah, and at one point it was gonna become a Starbucks, because what isn't these days? While the outside of the sanctum may look small, it's on the inside that counts, and inside it's packed full of labyrinthine corridors and rooms that seem to change size at will, a bit like the TARDIS, but with better furnishings. But what you might not know is that 177A Bleecker Street, Greenwich Village, New York City is actually a real place. Although I don't think it's the secret headquarters for the New Avengers or the Defenders. In fact, it looks like an apartment block stuck in between a grocery store and a tattoo parlor. Or maybe it's the perfect disguise. So there we are, five strange facts about Doctor Strange. For more videos like this one, make sure to like and subscribe to GameSpot. Don't be a strange, uh, we'll see you next week.